Greetings, everybody, and welcome back to some Bond Geek Talks About with me, your host. The name's Stevens. Henry Stevens. Everybody, how do you do? Hope you're all well. Hope you're enjoying a good Bond film, a good Bond book, a good Bond video game, a good James Bond, whatever praises you and makes you excited about the James Bond franchise as we do here on the Some Bond Geek Talks About channel. And today, everybody, we've reached film number 10. Yes, I'm going to bring it out right here and now. We're going to look at... Ooh, wrong one. We're going to look at The Spy Who Loved Me, everybody. The 10th James Bond film and a massive milestone in the franchise for so, so many reasons. But before we get into that, everybody, can I just ask and beg for a quick bit of house cleaning we're going to do right now. Please, if you're not always subscribed to the channel, can I ask... Why not? Why don't you subscribe? Comment down below as well and tell what you feel about The Spy Who Loved Me. Don't forget to click on the notification bell icon as well when you subscribe to get future updates on videos. And as always, everybody, a massive thank you from me to you for coming and being part of the show and giving me your thoughts and things. I really do appreciate it. So, everybody, um, let's just start off this uh, review here with my quick initial thought on The Spy Who Loved Me. Um, it, it's going to be a gush fex. It's, it's going to be because... I think this is, without a doubt, one of the best Bond films in the entire franchise. And uh, I also think it is probably Roger Moore's best Bond film. I'm not saying it's best performance, but I do think this is his best film. But let's go into that right now, everybody, because for those who are new to the channel, allow me to explain. The point of some Bond Geek talks about is not only for me to give reviews on the films and talk about stuff, but I like to share with you my own personal history of James Bond and tell you my stories about stuff. So, you know, just, just again, again, generate conversation. And I love doing it with you. And The Spy Who Loved Me has so many stories for me. Um, it's a film weird enough I didn't really watch a lot as a kid. And I'll tell you why. It is because of that man. Yes, Richard Keel Jaws. I was terrified of Jaws as a kid. I was absolutely, unbelievably terrified of Jaws. I've openly put my hands up. The whole metal teeth, Jaws was just, I can't explain it. I was just so scared. Everybody, to give you some context here, I had nightmares about Jaws sort of like following me all the time. Just that sort of walking, you know, just walking and following me around my own house, trying to sort of kill me and bite me with his teeth. It just, I had nightmares I couldn't sleep by myself for a while when I was a little boy because I was so I had so many nightmares connected with Jaws. It was just incredible. So I didn't watch it for a long time, and then I think eventually, um, obviously, I grew up a bit. I rewatched it again, and I feel I've I, I've been missing out on an absolute gem of a James Bond movie. Uh, but I think really enough when I see the Spy Who Loved Me, Jaws is the first thing the character that comes into my mind. But he's just such a wonderful character, isn't he? Um, I think he is definitely one of the top henchmen in the franchise as well. I mean, everything from these um, when he's introduced at Atlantis to running, you know, that bit in the um, pyramids, the fights with Bond, the stuff on the train is just terrific with Jaws. It's just every time Jaws is on screen, it's always like a massive moment in the franchise and you know Bond really is up against it. I do remember, um, as always, with a lot of these films, watching The Spy Who Me a lot with my grandfather, and he, he knew that I would just literally just dive into his body just to hide a bit when the certain elements of Jaws were on, mainly when, like, he, um, you know, was about to bite someone, or, like, when he appears out of the cupboard in the train, just, he knew I was always going to, like, be, get scared and just panic for those bits. God, thank you so much, my grandfather, for being there for me when I watched it. But yeah, that's really my uh, thoughts and real strong memories when it comes to Spy Who Loved Me. But everybody, listen, I know I said this is going to be a bit of a gush fest when it comes to the Spy Who Loved Me, but there are some things about it which, honestly, I'm not really a fan of and I don't like. Uh, number one, I would say, weird enough, upon recent rewatches, I have to agree with some people online. Carl Strongberg, even though I love the character, I love Strongberg, he is a bit flat. Um... I don't know, in my head, he was so much of a bigger person in my mind as a sort of better villain. But actually, upon rewatching recently, I have to notice he's a bit one note and um, overall, he's not that interesting. Um, I still like the character. I suppose I like his sort of evil plan and stuff and I just like the character. But I have to admit, he's not really actually one of the best villains in the franchise, if I'm absolutely honest. And um, he has a bit of an unsanctimonious way of he dies, but a really cool way. I think one of Roger Moore's most um, badass moments is 
um, James Bond. He shows that aggressive sort of, um, you know, I am actually a ruthless killer when, you know, he, he shoots him through the tube, hits him in the you know hoo hoo, and then shoots him even more after that and then falls off his chair. Uh, that's really um, the sort of the way to sum up Carl Strong, but he's the uh, mostly a loungy, just sit on the chair bad guy for the most part. And carrying on from that, there's another thing I've just really not liked about this, and um, I'll, I'll go into Major Anya Massiva a bit later in the uh, review, but it's all that obviously she gets captured, fair enough, but I would assume Anya would have been able to get out of the situation herself, not just rely on Bond to rescue her to save the day. There is a a story reason why it needs to be done like that but it always just slightly annoyed me it's like how can i put it it's like maybe maybe it's just in the modern day thoughts and feelings but you know i believe anya could have easily um maybe potentially rescued herself or maybe even helped bond in his uh, in her in his in her rescue i don't know that's just my personal feelings about that thing it's just really some of the things that annoy me but outside of those two things everybody the spy who loved me is just incredible I mean, it really is from a wonderful pre-title sequence with the, um, you know, the uh, capturing of nuclear submarines, you know, which leads in the Strongbow plan, obviously, which, by the way, is so terrific, you know, causing a, you know, nuclear Armageddon and creating a world under the sea. I love it. And one of the things I love about it is in that scene where I think up to this point, Bond films will be very used to like, we'll do this unless you give us a hundred million dollars. And then Strongbow just goes, I'm not interested in extortion. I'm just doing it because I want it. I want it done. That just added so much level of tension and real like physical threat and danger to this film, which I think just helps it so much. But sorry to say, the pre-title scenes again with the ski chase and that incredible jump sequence, which we all know is absolutely brilliant. Uh, the locations in this film, you know, Egypt and, um, you know, oh, Sardinia, which is also great. You know, every everything about this film um, visually is really, really stunning. The cinematography, sorry, I'm going to have to get into a uh, bit of a film make around here. But the cinematography and the colour design of this film is second to none. It is beautiful. I mean, this probably is my third favourite sort of um, photograph James Bond film outside of Skyfall and from Russia with Love. This the film looks absolutely incredibly beautiful. Um, but, you know, that's really, really um, as amazing. I'll talk about the pre-title sequence. I've got to talk, obviously, about the action sequences. Um, Lewis Gilbert is directing this film again. And, obviously, he comes with this trademark of big battle sequence at the end of the movie, which is obviously in a Strongbow's tanker wonderfully done and i think weird enough you look at you and live twice you could see it was really good but there's some mistakes he corrected the mistakes i think in for this film because everything about this all big battle sequence is just terrific and it's an amazing amazing sequence in the movie and it plays so well it doesn't drag it really does feel like it's a massive effort on bond there's little quieter moments i love the whole um tanker fight scene in this you know big finale at the end of this it's just so so good um, really, really terrific. You know, the bit where, you know, like Bond's trying to get rid of the nuclear reactor bit, um, really, really great. Um, I love that bit. But obviously, you know, going on from that, you've got a really great story here and a real connection with Bond because, obviously, I'm going to talk about Major um, Anya Masova here now, actually, because I think it really is appropriate. Um, Anya Masova, up to this point for me, is the best Bond uh, leading lady we've had up to this point in the franchise. I love how she is the alter ego of Bond again in a different way from Francisco Scaramanga. And I love how, because of the fact that Bond killed her fiancé, they start building up this tension, even though they build this great friendship, and then the big bombshell hits, which, by the way, those two acted the hell out of that sequence. Really well done. And then there's the tension, and obviously the forgiving at the end, which is really, really terrific. And Barbara Bach, to me, played a really interesting character. She was so much Bond's equal in this film without it being so much of an overstatement. And she just, you know, got on with her own thing and it was really, really well done. I think this is also definitely the best pairing for Roger Moore. Um, a lot of people might say it's maybe Maud Adams and Octopussy, but for me, uh, Roger Moore and Barbara Bach just fit mwah, so well together. And of course, we've got to talk about this, everybody. Uh, before we get on to the Lotus and other things, we've got to talk about this. But... Bond on a train. What has happened, everybody? An amazing sequence. An amazing fight sequence between Bond and Jaws. So wonderfully done. Again, rivaling from Russia with Loves. Oh, my God. The fight scene is terrific. I absolutely adore it. It's just movie magic. I'm sorry. I stand by it. Every time Bond's on a train, great fight sequences and great stuff always happens. If I was going to direct a Bond film, you'd certainly sure that I would have 
a Bond on train sequence. You can measure that. And it's such a great, it is such a great sequence. And it really has Bond um, at his wits end. You know, he actually is losing for a little bit. Uh, only by, I think, Lucky actually defeats Jaws in that situation. And then also, story-wise, everything um, connects to the next thing going forward. That's another thing I really love about this film. Every sequence, it's not like um, I can maybe miss this sequence to go to the loo or, you know, just maybe sing. Every single, I, I don't want to miss this sequence. I don't want to miss this bit. I don't want to miss this bit of The Spy Who Loved Me. I really don't. It's always that much of a good movie. And let's go on to the Lotus Esprit. And everybody, sorry, just go here. Obviously here. Um, continuing on from when I did it with Goldfinger, I have the uh, Lotus Esprit uh, toy car. Um, the missiles are completely gone, but obviously... Everybody excited, Henry, now. Underwater sequence. Because let's face it, we all remember that amazing bit where it's driving off here, goes, and then under the water, and then everything comes out, and then, you know, again, another great sequence, actually, with um, the cars, great car chase that led on to that. Um, the Lotus Esprit, I certainly think, is, if I had to say, is roger moore's bond car i mean he uses the lotus spree again a couple of times and um that shadow of a doubt really really terrific car sequence i love the lotus spree i i wish i could actually have one myself um i hear they're not such great cars but uh hey can't don't care i got lotus spree absolutely terrific um so yeah that's really really great as well just trying to think of some other things i really love about this because there's so much um you know even the small sequences I, i'll tell you what i'm gonna go on to the characters now otherwise we will be here forever as I said, this, I think, is Roger Moore's best film. He does an incredible performance here. I think this film, they got the balance just right of him being a badass, but also his signature quips and his real stone and tile. This film, I think they finally said, right, what is the Roger Moore James Bond? This is it. This is what we'll do going forward. We're not going to try and copy Sean Connery anymore. We're not going to just play around and see where his strengths are. This is the Roger Moore James Bond. This is it going forward. And I think the film is incredibly um, well relieved of that because um, it sets the tone, it sets the style, and Roger Moore feels so much more in his element. He's comfortable, and he's giving, I think, one of his best performances so far. I love Roger Moore in this film. Um, I'd hate to have any other actor with him enough be in The Spy Lumbee then it has to be Roger Moore without a shadow of a doubt for me. Really, really terrific. I mean, he's been at the end, you know, when he's having in bed with Anya and just keeping up the British end up, sir. I love it. I love it. Um, just so really good, you know, like when he's killing the other fen uh, henchman, you know, just what a what a awful chap or what a pleasant chap. Just so wonderful. Um, you know, can you play any other tune? His quips are just spot on in this film. Absolutely. Uh, the MI6 regulars are great. Um, M is really terrific. Q gets a lovely little scene as well. Money Penny just a little bit as well. I believe this is also the film in the franchise that introduced us to General Gogol, which is a really nice addition. I'll get into him a bit more later on in the uh, reviews, but he is really, really terrific. I've mentioned, obviously, Strongberg. Great performance by Kurt Juggins, but not the greatest. I love Anya Masova in the franchise. She is just terrific in this film. I love it very much to death. Um, you've got the Naomi um, of a bonga, who's okay. Nothing really special. I know a lot of people are a fan of her, but not quite so much for me. Um, you know, just everybody, this film, it really is in like the top echelon of Bond films, in my opinion, because I think just everything about it is just working on the correct cylinders. It's just firing every cylinder possible. It's a great romp. It's great action. It's a great spy film because the first two thirds of the film is really about is a spy thriller with a big action sequence at the end. A bit like, again, Lewis Gilbert's trade. I, I love the spy. I love me. I think it's absolutely terrific. And it's one of those Bond films that no matter, even if you're not a Bond fan, I always recommend just going to watch The Spy Who Loved Me because it really is just unbelievably terrific everybody i thoroughly recommend the spy who loved me now everybody i want to know what are your thoughts on the spy love me did you like it did you not like it as much as me i want to know comment down below and tell me what you think about the spy who loved me as always everybody my name is amy seems and this has been some bond geek talks about goodbye